friends, good morning, hello. We have Instagram here, Facebook and YouTube up here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This may be the last live that I'm doing in celebration of my newest book, Keto for Women. I'm just gonna close the drapes a little bit because it's really bright in here. That's a little bit better. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm gonna be chatting all about fasting today. So in Instagram here, I'm just gonna pin our comment so when people join in a little bit later you can see um, what we're chatting about I'm sitting here on a boat in North Carolina and the internet was pretty good so I figured I better I better do this I better do it while I can so I asked you guys a ton of questions or rather I asked you a question what questions do you have about fasting for women on keto and I got a ton of questions so we're gonna be covering fasting today I'm gonna to be referring to my newest book keto for women if you don't already have a copy pre-ordered you can go to keto for women.com to check out all the pre-order information you get a bunch of free things you get entered to win a happy keto body membership you lock in the lowest price you help me a whole bunch so if you haven't already pre-ordered you have until June 18th to pre-order and lock in that lowest price so again that's keto for women.com and there are a bunch of info on that page good morning green beauty and dolly and libid libidipon keto magnificent walker hello good morning okay so without further ado let's cut into this um first question and if you guys have questions throughout feel free to just post them in the comment box below on Instagram or if you have questions if you're joining me live on Facebook I'd be happy to answer them as we go um, what are your thoughts of toothpaste and mouthwash breaking a fast I don't worry about that too much um, I use Dr. Bronner's um, toothpaste I've been told that Dr. Mercola's toothpaste is better but I haven't tried it so I can't comment on that but um, I wouldn't worry about it, especially if it doesn't have sugar or you're not swallowing it. Yes, it is going to touch your mouth, so it's important to make sure that the ingredients are healthful, but I don't think you need to go crazy over it. <clears throat> okay, uh, any opinion on Dr. McCullough's new book, program, uh, book and program Keto Fast? I haven't read it yet. It's in my playlist. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, hey, hi. If you feel well, more than 16th is good for my thyroid. I don't know what that means. If you could elaborate, that'd be cool. Uh, can fasting make old injuries sore again? I wouldn't think so because fasting is supposed to reduce inflammation, but if you're noticing that every time you're fasting, you have injuries, um, you, your injuries are painful, what you could do, and I'm slowly starting to recommend this product. I haven't used it long enough to like fully go into it, but it's sitting right here. Um, if you have a previous injury, I use a product called Juve Go. Now this is the red light, which when I put it up close to my face, um, it's supposed to help with collagen production in my face, help with scarring, wrinkles, just smoothness of my skin. Um, so that's an option for you. Um, I would go with the infrared light more so than the red light, but that could be a good um, solution to pain uh, in previous injuries. And I've used infrared light on this wrist that I broke in seven places snowboarding, so that's definitely a good option. Um, if you're just joining in, I'm, I'm not so much reading from Keto for Women. I will in just a moment, uh, but you guys can get more details by going to ketoforwomen.com. Uh, not... Do you only drink coffee, water, tea on your fast? Okay, here we go. So on page 140 of Keto for Women, actually on page 138, I get into how to bring fasting into your ketogenic diet as a woman, how fasting works, uh, the benefits of intermittent fasting. So fasting reduces blood lipids, including triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, markers of inf inflammation, oxidative stress, risk of cancer. Fasting increases cellular turnover and repair, uh, fat burning, metabolic rate later in the fast. Fasting improves appetite control, blood sugar control, and cardiovascular function. And I go on to talk about why I love fasting, how to know if fasting is right for you versus not so right for you, and when to really stop. And we're gonna get into that in a bit, but I'll just cover the basics. When fasting isn't right for you includes when you're pregnant, 
you've lost your appetite completely when you're supposed to be eating, you're breastfeeding, you have adrenal dysfunction, you tend to feel overwhelmed easily and suffer from anxiety and depression and or depression, you experience hypothyroid symptoms, you have a hard time sleeping, you have imbalanced hormones, especially amenorrhea or PCOS when you either have super low hormones or high hormones in the case of PCOS where they're too high. Estrogen dominance is one of those things where I feel like you could benefit from fasting however PCOS um, some some of my clients do well on it some don't but it's definitely good to know what your limits are so you can set things yourself um, and and be aware so now do you dr only drink coffee water tea on your fasts you can really have okay the way I see it is there's two different paths and I talk about this in the book Either path number one is autophagy, where you are not eating anything. That helps with the cellular turnover and repair, reducing inflammation, helping your cells. Um, so when we're wanting to go that route, and we don't have to choose either route, we can do either or, we can intermix them, it's totally fine. But if we're doing autophagy, do not eat anything. Only water, you can have herbal teas, um, Earl Grey tea is really helpful because it has bergamot oil, which helps increase autophagy, so that's really helpful. Um, but you would not have a fatty coffee. You would not do fatty coffees, okay? Got that? Okay, cool. Because I answer this question like probably 20 times a day. So that's the autophagy route. Then you have the insulin regulation route, which when you're fasting, you can regulate your insulin, you can lower down your numbers. This is really helpful for people that have blood sugar issues, whether too high or too low. Now, in this case, we want to have the fatty coffee. So we can have fats, like we can supplement with our CBD oil, we can have a little fat bomb, we can um, do a rock of fuel latte, which I've included the recipe in Keto for Women, if nobody knows what it is yet the recipe is in there for you to follow along with a bunch of different ways to change it up like a coconut party a hot cacao a green tea latte an eggnog how to do an ayurvedic uh, rocket fuel latte so when you're doing this other route by balancing your blood sugar then you don't need to worry so much about what's going in your body as long as it's got fat minimal carbohydrates like maximum three grams of carbs during your fast and minimum protein at a maximum of 10 grams throughout your fast. Now, that's gonna keep your blood sugar level. So you have, again, the autophagy route where you're not eating, you're just having water. Now, this route doesn't really work if you need to take specific supplements at a specific time every day because that could throw off your fast. So on those days, or if you're that person, you can still go the blood sugar route and increase um, or rather balance out your blood sugar by fasting, but not necessarily fasting in the autophagy route. Now for me, I go in and out of different ones. Sometimes I'm having a fatty coffee, sometimes I'm not eating. I just finished a 36 hour fast, not because I planned it, but because I just wasn't hungry. So I just had water and I was fine. I also supplemented with a bunch of charcoal during that fast um, because I've had some symptoms that I just need to clear out with some charcoal. So that was really helpful during that fast. And then I broke it with a bunch of fat, which technically, like I had, oh, I have these right here. I broke it with one of these keto manas and technically this is still fasting because all this is is fat. So now I've switched from the autophagy um, fast over to the blood sugar regulating fast. So you guys see how that works? It's two different routes that you can take, but you don't need to decide 100% I'm doing the autophagy route or 100% I'm doing the blood sugar route. You just kind of see how you feel. And once you've been keto for a little while, your body will be able to quite easily and effortlessly slide into either state and you don't have to stress too much about it. Okay, um, what is the what are the best fasting options? So I... On page 148 of my newest book, Keto for Women, there's still time to pre-order. Go to ketoforwomen.com. And I just keep repeating that because people are joining in like crazy. Okay, so on this page, I've outlined the different types of fasting. So we're just going to go through that really quick. Uh, a, a quick question on the routes. For weight loss, which route is best? That's a trick question. Because if your weight gain is because of your blood sugar regulation issue, then option number two is best. 
if your weight gain is because your cells are totally messed up and your metabolism is a total wreck, then option number one. Probably the best option if you're wanting to lose weight is switching between one and two and one and two. And so the way that I've done it when I was in a weight loss um, protocol was I would do two days of autophagy fasting and then one or two days of blood sugar fasting. And every other day I would have a meal in the morning because I was experiencing amenorrhea and I was trying to balance out um, eating enough by, but um, fasting and increasing cellular turnover, but also fasting to regulate blood sugar because I had all those issues. So you really have to customize. It's not just a one and done approach with anything to do with your body and your health, right? So you got to like pick a little couple of things and not commit to any one thing um, just because there are probably a couple of imbalances that you're trying to work with. And by working with all these different areas and making your own protocol, that's what works best. Um, generally for most bodies and so that's what I really outlined in my book is how to develop that knowledge so that you can figure out how to pick from each one and make a plan that works best for you so the types of fasting that I've outlined in my book fast when you feel like it so that's what I've already talked about today in that whenever you feel like it you don't eat or whenever you feel like it when you wake up or go to bed you're having a fatty drink before bed instead of an actual meal or when you wake up you just don't feel like it maybe you're having some bone broth with some coconut oil in it another one is a 16 hour fast now that can be done three to five days per week ish the level of difficulty is two so the level of difficulty with, with fast when you want it is just like a one like you're just following your body it's relatively easy to do all the things the level of difficulty is two so this is fast for 16 hours and then eat for eight hours so a day one could be stop eating at 9 p.m. and then day two would be start eating at 1 p.m. so this is just a standard 16 hour fast and the longer you are keto the um, easier it will be to hit 16 hours now if you're hungry at 14 hours please eat if you're hungry at 12 hours please eat there are gonna be days where you're really hungry and days where you're not and it's really important to listen to your body another option is a 24 hour fast level of difficulty is three I like to reserve a 24 hour fast to like my clients who are um, a year beyond their ketogenic journey um, just because as we um, get in a ketogenic state and our body gets really comfortable there we just find that we don't need to eat that much and it becomes very effortless to go that long period of time now with any of these fast when you feel like it 16 hour fast or 24 hour fast now this is intermittent fasting anything longer than 24 hours I consider like fasting it's not intermittent you're going on a long period fast um, so with any of these protocols you can either use the autophagy route or you can use the blood sugar route um, I also talk about protein sparing modified fasting some concerns I have with the strategy so if you'd like show me the hearts and I will um, read that piece so just heart it up let me know if you'd like me to read about protein sparing modified fasting and I'll get that done um, <coughs> what if anything are you eating drinking on your 36 hour fast just water and charcoal I already answered that awesome uh, my goal is autophagy but I'm 10 years post uh, gastric bypass and struggle with fasting advice chat with your doctor I'm not um, knowledgeable enough with uh, gastric bypass um, to say what you should be eating and how you should be eating you really need to talk with your medical professional on that does CBD oil break a fast Technically, it would break an autophagy fast because you're really only supposed to drink water uh, as far as my body and how I'm able to measure it. So if you were wanting to take your CBD oil during your fasting period, the best route is to just do the blood sugar regulation fast and give yourself um, the opportunity to have that supplement. Okay, so I'm going to open up the next set of questions, close this down quick, and... There are a bunch of hearts, so let's read from the Protein Sparing Modified Fast section. Again, I'm reading from my newest book, Keto for Women. Go to ketoforwomen.com to pre-order your copy. You have until June 18th. It really helps me. So please, if you haven't pre-ordered yet, just do it. You lock in the lowest price. It really, really, really helps me out a whole bunch. I am planning on going on tour, but I really, really need those numbers high enough um, that bookstores want to book me for the tour. So if you haven't already pre-ordered, go to ketoforwomen.com and there are a bunch of details on that page about how you can pre-order and help me out. Lock in the best price, get a bunch of freebies, and we all win. Because you're going to get this book anyways. You are. You will. 
<laughs> if you're a woman on keto and you're struggling or you're just wanting to make it work for you, you will end up getting this book and um, by pre-ordering it really helps. Okay, there's another fasting method that I didn't include with the others on, on the facing page because I don't see it as a daily or even weekly or monthly strategy, making it less of an intermittent fasting protocol and more of a fasting protocol all on its own. It's called Protein Spar Sparing Modified Fast, also known as PSMF on the keto block, and it's designed to kickstart weight loss for people who are severely obese. You got that? Yeah. Um, PSMF reduces calories to the lowest possible amount while keeping protein high enough that lean tissue mass is preserved and maintaining enough micronutrients to avoid malnutrition. I have some, I have some concerns about the strategy. Many women remain on it longer than they should because we abuse it. Who hasn't abused it eating style when we know it's working and we know it's kind of bad for us? Two, many women who are not severely obese pick it up as a strategy for weight loss when they could benefit from instead from a different approach to their ketogenic diet that's going to be long term and not cause binges and all the things. Many women who try this approach have been on restrictive diets for years and they haven't worked. So going on yet another severely strict diet may only affect the metabolism further and throw women even further out of touch with their bodies, which is not going to help you in the long run. I promise you. Micronutrient manipulation doesn't, uh, uh, micronutrient deficiencies rather, don't just happen overnight. So the huge thing about protein modified, uh, protein sparing modified fasting is that everyone says, I did it for a week. I feel great. Well, you're not going to know what your nutrient de uh, deficiencies are for quite a long time after doing this. Are you writing a new book soon? I already wrote one. Actually, I wrote two new books since my first one. It's called Keto for Women. You can find out more by going to ketoforwomen.com. Um, the fact that the strategy is designed to avoid micronutrient deficiencies tells me that the practice should only be done for short periods. However, when something works for us ladies, we have a hard time not doing it more of it. My concern here is that when we've found something that works, we will naturally want to do more of it. And in this case, doing more could be detrimental detrimental. All the studies I was able to locate on PSMF recommend that it be done under the constant supervision of medical professionals. Okay. If you're interested in PSMF and I think you'd be a, and think you'd be a great candidate, I highly urge you to locate a medical professional in your area to guide you through a medically supervised version of this approach. Cause there's like a lot of people using the hashtag PSMF on Instagram and I can guarantee you they're not working with a medical professional. And in my professional experience and um, outlook, a lot of these people are not severely morbidly obese and they do not need to be on this protocol and it will actually do more harm than good in the long run. Uh, Sandra says, looking forward to the release of the new book. Me too, next Tuesday, I can't believe it. Okay, some more questions that have come in. Um, you came up on my, uh, okay, let's see. Do you eat or drink anything with calories during a fast? Okay. We've already covered that. Uh, thoughts on fasting mimicking diet. Uh, we just talked about that. Uh, fasting mimicking. So I did a podcast episode about fasting mimicking. So that could be helpful for you. Uh, I can't remember what. Let me just look it up so you guys know. Helpful pursuit. Da, 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 da. No, internet's not good enough. Okay, just go to ketodietpodcast.com and there's an episode about fasting mimicking. And there's a book about it too. Um, I also want to. Okay, I am starting my 16-8 fast. I also want to use collagen. Do I wait until I start eating or can I have it in my coffee? If you're doing the autophagy route, do not have it in your coffee during your fasting. If you're doing the blood sugar route, as long as it's 10 grams or less, you're okay. If you're following a ketogenic lifestyle to overall be healthier and lose some weight, how much weight should I lose per week or does it just depend or vary? Um, you want to lose anywhere between one to two pounds a week, any more than one pound, like two pounds is really pushing it any more than one pound. You really, um, don't want that because your skin is going to be sagging. It's going to get floppy. It's not going to be great. So one pound a week, four pounds a month, your skin is going to catch up with your weight loss and you won't have all that 
floppy skin that a lot of people will experience when they lose weight too fast. Supplementing with collagen can be really helpful during that period too, just to help skin tightening. Uh, looking forward to the release. Uh, yeah, my live feed is probably cutting in and out because I'm on water. So I hope you guys are um, enjoying it and uh, I'll upload this video to YouTube if there were pieces missed. Um, it is best to do prolonged fasting. Okay, so um, let's see if we can find the page because I really want to show you guys instead of just answering questions because you need to see this book as a resource that you can use all the time for all the things. Let's see if I can find it. Adrenal health, thyroid. <laughs> I should have tabbed this. Let's see if I can just find it. So, ha, perfect. So on page 342, there are a bunch of different macro circles. Now I included this in the Keto Diet Cookbook so you guys can get familiar with it. Oh, we're having a dance party with the light on Instagram. I don't know why it does this. So just enjoy the dance party. Um, the best, best time to do a prolonged fast if you're still experiencing a period is days 6 to 11 during your cycle. The first day after your period until three days before ovulation. This is when women are most responsive to the ketogenic diet, able to eat very low carb or no carb with boundless energy. So that's right here. Yeah, cool. Um, I pretty much do 16-8 uh, daily thoughts. If it works for you, great. I'm just going to try to close this um, thing so that we can get rid of this light thing that's happening. Hold on. Nope, it's stopping. Well, we tried. 16-8 uh, daily. You could, you can, oh, it did work. You could do it, you could not. It really depends on your body, what works best for you. Um, Personally, when I did 16-8 every day, it didn't work that well for me long term. But if it really works for you, then who am I to say to not do it? Does MCT in your coffee break your fast? We already covered that. Is it worth uh, to fast for 12 to 15 hours or is it effective only at 16 hours? It's effective after an hour. Every moment that you are able to fast is a win in my book. Okay. Let's see here. Awesome, more questions. Okay, we'll do a little bit more. Um, I do notice that I respond better to the ketogenic diet before ovulating. Wow, I'm so happy that you said that. Yeah, right after ovulation, it really comes into the carb cycle approach, which I cover in the book a lot. A lot of the rest of the questions are based on um, what I've already covered. So if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to post them below in the comments, but all of this is like rock a fuel latte, timing, um, what would be the best way? Yeah. Amazing guys. Well, if you don't have any further questions, um, it looks like Facebook cut out because my internet isn't the best. I'm sorry. Um, but again, this is my book, Keto for Women. You guys can find out more details by going to ketoforwomen.com. I got to read a little bit from it. There's lots of fasting information in this book. Um, I'll just kind of show you. There's, yeah, about 15 pages all on fasting to really help you guys make sense of it. Uh, the fa fasting protocol for postmenopausal women, you can fast as much as you'd like. Uh, if your adrenals are dysfunctional, uh, you may find that fasting makes your experience worse because your adrenals um, really, really need a lot of love after you've experienced menopause. So if you find that your adrenals are not doing well, the first thing I'd cut out is coffee and chocolate and just kind of see if that helps with your fasting, if it helps with your overall well-being. But for menopause, post-menopause, uh, you can fast as much as you'd like. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday. I always have to check what day it is. And thank you so much. I really enjoyed spending time with you. And again, you can go to ketoforwomen.com to grab your copy and I will see you soon. Okay. Bye.